All right. I know. <laughs> Watch what you say. Well, great to see you all here this morning. It's about time to start. And so, as you all know, our seminarian, Lisa Lewis, is going to be uh, talking a little bit today about uh, what she did uh, over the summer and talk about her uh, trip to Guatemala, which I'm really looking forward to. Been to Guat Guatemala about I guess it was 90, 91, somewhere back in there. So it's been a long time. It's a beautiful country. And I look forward to hearing about your adventures down there. Kind of like yesterday, 90, 91, right? Just like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Day before yesterday. Um, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Heavenly Father, um, thank you for this opportunity to share with your children in Marble Falls about your children in Guatemala. And Holy Spirit, please come and fill this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, this is a photo of the renowned arch in Guatemala and in, in Antigua. I was specifically in Antigua, a little bit about Antigua. It was the nation, their nation's first capital in 1524. So it... Um, the country has earthquakes and a devastating earthquake came over Guatemala. And so they decided to move the capital to what is now Guatemala city. Okay. Now, why can't I, there we go. Come on. Okay. I have a beautiful PowerPoint that does. Oh, there we go. Click up there. So on July 10th, my husband and I, that's Bill, a lot of you've met Bill, we left out of the Houston airport, still wearing masks, and, and we arrived in Antigua later that evening. On the right, I don't know if you can notice, but this, does my cursor work? Yep, see this right here? That's, that's a puff coming out of a mountain. Oh my goodness, that's oh, a wow. volcano. So um, Antigua is surrounded by three volcanoes. One is called Akata, I, I wrote it down, Akatanango. Usually if it ends in an ongo, it's a Maya language. So um, just to let you know, and the other one is called Fuego and another one is called Agua. Well, the Fuego means fire. And that happens to be um, the Volcan Fuego. So Antigua is full mm. of color, flora and fauna. And I'm just starting off with some photos so you can see how colorful the country oh, wow. is. And these are normally called chicken buses. And this <laughs> is what the locals ride to get around. Once again, that is that was out my um, my our apartment window. So they decorate streets. You can see the and the colors of the building green. I mean the homes green, orange, blue, yellow. And this is the downtown plaza. So this is the cathedral. They have I think over ten cathedrals that were built sometime in the 1700s. And this is the um, cathedral and the, the celebration on July 25th, because the day they were founded, July 25th, 1524. Can I stop you for just a second. Sure. I've just got a text saying no mic. Can y'all hear us out there? Can somebody let me try to turn this video back on? Let's see. Can somebody let us know if you're able to hear us out there? <laughs> Can you hear us, Rowan, Taylor, and Luke? Y'all look suspiciously like Bob and Pam Link. You can? Okay. Okay, so apparently we are going through. Okay, okay good. If you're not able to hear us for any reason, uh, you can always... Uh, Unmute yourself and let us know, or put something in the chat to let us know. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No worries. No worries. 
So this is the downtown, downtown cathedral and it, um, Guatemala, I mean, Antigua was founded on the day of St. James. So it is known as the Ciudad de Santiago. So it is the city of St. James. And that was this celebration. So behind Bill and I on the left, can you see that? That they had a marimba, but not one, but 30 playing at the same time. So during this week, they, they have all kinds of parties. But um, due to the time, my time frame, like I want to show everybody all my pictures, but I'm just going to show you some. Guess what this is? Poinsettias grow wild. Oh, wow. That is behind the church. I mean, I was flabbergasted and I thought, oh, you guys would appreciate that. <laughs> So once again, um, I'm wanting to show you the colors of the buildings in the background. So it is a candy colored city. These are typical Maya women and that the, their blouses are called weeples. And that is a typical indigenous dress. And they um, go around selling fruits and breads. And can you see? this hand right here. Yep. So she's, this woman is offering this woman um, some fruits of her basket up there to sell. So this is very common. And then they have, they bring their children. So she has her back full of stuff and, and she has on a miniature of her mama. So they wear this skirt, it's one long length of fabric and they wrap it around. And oftentimes you can tell what um, area of the country they're from because of the stitching. I, my weeples are at home in Tyler, but I, I have this bag and this is all hand done. So they sell bags like this, but, but a Guatemalan would know by the, by the style of where this is from. So just more textiles, they do a back looming. And so color is everywhere, it just dances. So Bill and I arrived in Antigua on July 11th. And once again, that is the Volcano Fuego. And we got ready, rested to do boots on the ground. On July 12th, I met with Mother Nellie. She is the priest in charge at St. Albans in um, Antigua, it's the only English speaking church in the city of Antigua, but they have two in the entire country. One is St. James, the cathedral in Guatemala city, and then St. Albans in Antigua. So this, they rent this room here and it, this was formerly a home, a palatial home. So this is what the interior looks like. These are the doors when you enter. So that's this space right down here, okay? And so in here, this door, if you're facing this way, this lets in all this glorious light. So I just wanted you to get a, a be there with me. So as Sunday morning, right now, they're in church, they're worshiping in here. They have the same liturgy we do. And um, Mother Nellie had the same choice of four sermons that Father Dave had. I'm curious to see if she preached on Jeremiah. Not bloody likely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just curious. Um, I'll find out and let you know. But that is the beauty of, of all of us being a part of the Anglican communion. That is what I love about our faith tradition. And this table, yes, they do have community hour and they have Guatemalan coffee. So I um, I wrote this out. The seminary consultation on mission grant came to my attention at the beginning of the fall semester last year when I first met you all. My husband encouraged me to apply, but it was mid-September. I had sequestered myself like a desert mother, holed up in my cave, studying constantly. 
Yet knowing my heart for missions and specifically for the people of Guatemala, I was drawn to this opportunity. We had visited this lush, mysterious Mayan land on spring break a year ago and had the privilege of meeting the new Bishop of Guatemala, the Right Reverend Silvestre Romero. He graciously recounted story after story of parish needs of our brothers and sisters in Guatemala. Then a thought bubbled up. What if I could make a parish profile and to portray the needs and goals of each parish in Guatemala? and then link those back to the Diocese of Texas so somehow we can become in partnership with each other. Well, Dr. Steve Bishop is, um, he was the professor, Dave had Steve Bishop, and um, he's my Old Testament professor, and he was the staff um, partner, and he came alongside me, and he gave me the support and insight I needed. So by mid-November, I received an email of congratulating on my pro proposal being accepted. So maybe a seminary student could affect change. So for my grant, I proposed to develop a parish personality profile that would portray the goals like I've already spoken. Um, St. Albans is a transitory parish, meaning people come into Antigua, several people have have um, summer homes, winter homes, and they come there. And so their membership is always moving. So people come in, people leave. And so sometimes they don't know, the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. So I was, I found the definition of the parish profile on our, I call it the big church website. The Episcopal church has so many incredible resources. And if you haven't been on it, I just encourage you to, to jump on there and see what all they have. So as you can tell, a parish profile is an instrument that provides information. And that's just really what I wanted to do. So I put together this um, PowerPoint that you're seeing now, the um, little, I guess, Gothic window things. This was part of my profile PowerPoint that I made for them and presented on July 12th. So I just, this is my campus. I don't know if any of you all have been over there, but I invite you to come. And Dave recognizes this because we both went to the same seminary and Claire. So in 2016, my husband and I first began visiting Guatemala. And you can tell this was a long time ago because my hair's still brown. <laughs> <laughs> and this was way before I even thought about becoming a priest. But um, an international ministry contacted me about making a, using, I have graphic design skills, so I designed this coloring book, and to teach people who are illiterate. Guatemala has one of the highest illiterate, Ill, illiterate rates of all of Central America. And so not only was I able to design the book, I was also able to, to present it. So I got to see the project come to full fruition. Then in 2019, my home parish of Christ Church, we partnered with Santiago de Jerusalem in Chimaltenango. I always have to get a head start when I say that <laughs> because I always want to call it Chimal Chimaltenango. And I know it doesn't end with a mango. <laughs> so um, Father... David Luckenbach, and that is uh, Father Padre Miguel, and then Father Matt Bolter, who just now took the um, rectorship at St. George's in Austin. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's you, yours truly holding a baby. Mm -hmm. So we arrived the day before All Saints Day, and they had this incredible parade at All Saints Day where they make, these are cal called alfombras. These are made of wood shavings and these are bags back here full of colored wood shavings and they take a form and lay it down and families do this and say so there was a family laying out this carpet across the street from my hotel and this was in 19 and I was invited to help so 
there's giant thurbers and incense is flowing and I'm still trying to pack down because I have never, you, you take the form and you grab your handful of sawdust and you have um, soiled hands. I mean, dyed hands at the end, but um, it's just this magnificent procession remembering their loved ones. So sometime look that up because I want you to see that. Once again, we partnered with the church in Chamaltenango, and they wanted to have a dental clinic. Now, none of our team were dentists, but we all of us brushed our teeth. So we had a toothbrushing demonstration because there is so much sugar. Children chew on sugar cane all day long, and they have a poor dental hygiene and they don't know good dental hygiene. So when we asked Padre Miguel right here, what would you like us, how can we serve you? He said, I would like a dental clinic to teach my neighborhood here where my church is located, how to brush their teeth. And that's what we did. So this is in March of 21. This is my, uh, this is my baby. He's six foot two leaning over and you can tell that's the arch in the background. And um, my middler year is when I, we went to Guatemala and that was the first time we met the bishop. And this is where I heard that idea about a parish profile. So on, whoops, did I miss one? So on July 12th, this is the group of ladies, part of the group and we went for coffee afterwards. They asked me to bring them some books for a prison ministry that one of, this woman here is in seminary. She's a seminarian and one of her fellow seminarians does prison ministry and a prisoner, a, one of the woman, women prisoners asked for books in Spanish for something to read. So in my already heavy luggage, <laughs> I tried to pack as much as I could. Once again, the purpose of the parish profile was to, um, to help give them more of a defining moment. Who are we? Why are we here? And what do we value? Who is the body of Christ that is called St. Albans? So before I got there, I made an eight foot timeline because they're only 10 years old. St. Albans Episcopal Mission. And I wanted them to see all their ups and downs and then be able to fill that in. So we talked about that. Um, and then for them to start thinking about their hopes, their dreams for their future. So with, I did writing and editing and I did the layout and production, but I wanted you to see where I did it. This was where I stayed. So um, I stayed at, San Jose El Viejo Language School. Not only did Bill and I, um, Bill, I'll get to him in a minute, but for me, I worked with St. Albans, but I also took two hours of Spanish every day. Now, lo siento mi español es mal. So I just said my Spanish, I'm sorry, my Spanish is bad. And um, when I was much younger, I learned Spanish in the present tense. But as I got older, my mind got a little lazy in trying to memorize all the other tenses. And so that's why I needed language school. And I still need language school. And I take a Spanish class every Wednesday night. I wish I could say I was a lot better, but I, I keep trying. So um, the place we stayed had at least three or four fountains. And they had a swimming pool, but while it was 105 in Tyler, Texas, I was suffering with 78 degrees in Guatemala. Oh, <laughs> I, it did rain every afternoon though. <laughs> and I was blessed to be able to serve at the altar party inside um, St. Albans. And this is Mother Nellie. And look at that lovely candle. There's a company or a family that's been making candles for 200 years there. So my final project, I made the, um, I did make the parish profile. This is the cover. And this is the cross that is right back here. And I, you, you can't really tell, but 
they're dots with color inside the dots and it's all hand painted. Guatemala is full of artisans, artisans, not art, artisans are a well, <laughs> artisans. So this is the, the Sunday I got to present the final project. And this is the welcome page from um, Mother Nellie. I just included some of these so you can see. Um, St. Alban Episcopal Church is a welcoming and dynamic community of worshipers located in Antigua, Guatemala. Our mission is to bring God's love to the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Our members span across the globe as well as the spectrum of age, politics, theology, but we find common ground in Christ and working for God's kingdom. We are thrilled that you are reading this and hope you desire to be part of our community. And then Mother Nellie's welcome words, welcome to the community of St. Alban. We are an Anglican community nestled in the great city of La Antigua, Guatemala. Our doors are open every Sunday at the beautiful Casa Convento Concepcion. That's the name of the compound. Um, to celebrate Holy Eucharist at 10 a.m., all are welcome regardless of personal and religious backgrounds. Come and worship with us. Our communion table is open to all Christians. So this is a little bit more about the city. And um, you see this picture right here? This is a vendor selling fruit. Look what time and effort they took to cut pineapple and then place them and make them look like flowers. Um, this was the first time I have ever seen a blue tailed lizard. So I was walking with the host of the of, of where we stayed and I said he said what are you doing I said I am looking for la la garajita let me, let me think for a minute because I would get the words mixed up one means smallpox and one means lizards <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I'm a work in progress with my Spanish so um, an interesting story about this vendor, this is Leslie, and she is who I bought the bag from. I met her a few years ago, and as we were visiting, um, I was waiting on Bill. He was patiently waiting for me outside, and he came in. I said, my husband is a cyclist. Many of you all already know that. And she said, my husband's a cyclist. And so while I worked with St. Albans, Bill um, rocked was riding a bike with her husband almost every morning. And the blessing of the community, my husband is the president of Tyler Bike Club. And when he goes to Guatemala, he always brings extras of whatever the bike club had ordered. So he was giving away bicycle socks and he gave it to this one guy. And so Bill, before we left in June, Bill was on um, face. They're very active on Facebook and there's an ex expat Facebook site for Antigua and Bill said I'm looking for a 56 inch bike bikes are measured by their size well Guatemalans are about all about this tall and the only bikes they had to rent were 52 inches and my husband is almost six foot and a 52 inch bike would not work for him so he gets a message from Christoph and he says hey Bill I've got a bike you can borrow Christoph Bill says who's Christoph and um I said well I I'm not sure and come to find out Christoph was one whom Bill gave the socks to because Christoph sent a picture Christoph's an excellent mountain biker and he was on a platform he said hey Bill look at the socks and they were the socks Bill gave him so God works through socks <laughs> we worship an amazing God <clears throat> this last picture <clears throat> behind these arches see right here those are made of concrete or rock and this is where women have been doing laundry for hundreds of years and they still do laundry here to this day so I just found that so in intriguing 
I wanted to share that with you. Said so this is the welcome page in the parish profile. <clears throat> this is all about St. Albans. And this is another picture of the um, entrance into the Casa Convento. On the right, <clears throat> this is more of the grounds. Um, this is Les Elizabeth Bell. She owns Antigua um, Tours. And that's how we first met. And um, Elizabeth, I'm checking my time. Um, when Bill was scouting for my home parish, Christ Church, uh, connecting, making connections, he flew in and Father David joined him. And they had a round table of all the different um, ministries that were happening in Gu Guatemala City. And they were praying for the Holy Spirit to open up a, a direction. And so different people would be sharing their ministry and Father David, no, that's not it. And then somebody else would share about their street ministry. No, that's not it. In Guatemala City, they have this, I think, two football fields long of a trash dump. People go in there and gather things to sell. So there's ministry to the recyclers. So somebody shared about the ministries going around there. Lots of people do ministry there. But Father David of Christ Church said, no, that's not it. So all these different ministries were sharing and Bill and Father David did not feel the leading of the Holy Spirit. So they were getting ready to leave town in two days and Bill wanted Father David to see Antigua. So they go up to Antigua and they go have coffee at Cafe Contessa. It's, it's on the square. Remember where the, um, the cathedral was? That's a, that's a plaza. And so... Antigua Tours, Elizabeth Bell's ministry, I mean, business is based out of there. And she gets to talk with Father David and Bill said, I'm an Episcopalian. I'm, a, I'm the senior warden at St. Albans, but I know about a place up in Chinalta Mango. And said so that all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, yes, that's it. And that's how the Holy Spirit works is through people. But I want you to see why Elizabeth Bell is so important because she helped precipitate my heart for the Guatemalan people of Antigua and all of Guatemala. So this is the final page for um, the parish profile. I didn't include all of them because I could talk about Antigua, Guatemala and what the Lord's doing there all day. But this is really what their ministry is about. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. They, um, Little St. Albans is a mission and they hope to be reaching parish status by the end of next year. And they will be the first mission in all of Guatemala to do that, except for the cathedral. And it says, you gave me something to drink and I was a stranger and you invited me in. And that is exactly what St. Albans does. I had the privilege of being able to ask to preach on my last Sunday. So that's kind of a silly picture. That this really is how I feel, felt all summer. I also, um, Mother Nellie, is the dean of the seminary. And so they have 15 seminary students at St. Thomas Seminary in Guatemala City. So one Saturday I traveled down there and let me skip, here's, so here's the seminary students and this is the cathedral and this is the cross in front of the cathedral. But <clears throat> what I found so interesting were the personalities coming out in the classroom Some of you who have been teachers understand what I'm talking about. Um, but what is incredible is that it felt like my classroom down in Austin. This fellow right here, this, he was having a side conversation with her. This is Julie. She has gray hair like me. And 
he had his computer plugged in because he was almost out of battery, just like my friend Eric in my class now. And then over on the right were people that were checking their um, Facebook page, just mm -hmm. like my friends do in class now. And you had some people that were always answer, raising their hands just at like in my class now. So I love how the personalities were all different, but they were so similar. So let me go back up. Um, I, when I found out I could not make a parish profile for every church in the country, that was a little aggressive. God reeled me back and said, I only want you to work with um, St. Albans. And being an American, I thought, oh, my lands, I'll have that done in a week. I need something else to do. So I had the idea. I prayed and the Holy Spirit said, go with what you know. And what do I know? I know art and art history. And I had just had a class last spring called Art and Spirituality. And so I thought, I know, I'll do an art seminar. And like a true Texan, if one's good, why not let's do three? <laughs> what was I thinking? And so I um, planned and I did three different art seminars and they were amazing. And, and it was just a beautiful experience, but I would truly encourage people to go with what you know, maybe practice ahead of time. I mean, maybe when you think of something, try to do something you've done before. Or you can fly off the cuff like I do. Um, so that's my final slide. Who's ready to go with me? Summer is awesome. So there we go. And that's what I've got. I'm gonna escape. Can I escape now? So you had indicated, I gather, that the, these were the profile was set up kind of with a target audience of Episcopal churches in the United States. So it was all done in English, or has it been? Is it available in Spanish also? Said so the the goal was to have someone interpret for me to set up profiles for all these different churches. Here's the situation. When I received the grant, I contacted the bishop and I didn't hear anything in January. I contacted him in February. I didn't hear anything. Life started happening with semester. And so I contacted him in May. Finally, after three more tries, the bishop who is a busy man being the single bishop of the entire country emails me back and said, oh, yes, Lisa, I'm sorry I did not contact you in January, and I'm very interested. What are your expectations from us? So I quickly emailed them back, thrilled to have an answer. I said, absolutely none. I said, I received a grant. I explained it to him. He said, <clears throat> so he said, I have some ideas and I'll get back to you. Well, I'm still waiting for him to get back to me. So I took that as God closed that door. And so I, I reached out to Mother Nellie and she says, come on, I can't wait. So, you know, God works in all kinds of ways. And anytime you deal with other cultures, you just have to remain flexible. It said the day I was at the seminary, the bishop was there and he smiled and gave me a hug, but he never shared with me his other ideas. But, but that's okay. That, that's okay. Um, other questions? When you were preaching, did you, well, of course, you preached in English, but did the congregation, were they all English speaking? Or This is an all English expatriate community. Oh, okay. So that answers that. Oh, yes. How was your profile received? With gratitude, um, they were overwhelmed and very thankful. They are a gracious congregation. I, I don't, oh yeah, I've got to tell this story. So after my first Sunday, a lovely family comes in, <clears throat> mother, husband, and three children. And so mother Nellie introduced me. This is Lisa Lewis and, and her husband. Bill's getting used to being just referred to as her husband. Um, 
and they are from Tyler, Texas. Lisa is a seminarian at Seminary of the Southwest. So afterwards, the mother walks up to me and she goes, hi, I'm Abby Nelson. And I grew up in Tyler, Texas. So come to find out, Tyler has a couple of camps nearby. Pine Cove is a huge Christian camp. And her dad, Bedford Holmes, used to be the CEO and director of Pine Cove. Consequently, right when we were moving to Tyler in 1997, she was leaving for college. She is um, a PA and she does work in Guatemala City, but they live in Antigua. And I talked about the sugar earlier. She works with diabetics, mainly around that city dump area. Her husband is a psychologist, and so <clears throat> he does work in Guatemala as well. So, but that was incredible. We had dinner with them a couple of times over at their home and met their children. That the whole city to meet somebody from Tyler, Texas. Amazing. Gotta love that. Yeah. Let's keep going with the slideshow, maybe a quick exit. I think that'll make the stop. How about stop share? There you go. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Any questions for Lisa? One random thing that I remember from, at least when I was in Guatemala, you talked about the high literacy rate. Um, back then, at least, one of the big challenges was that actually a, a lot of the population down there didn't even speak Spanish. They, True. They, they spoke various uh, Indian native Indian tongues. Mm -hmm. And so not only could they not read, read or write, but they couldn't even speak Spanish. So it was a, a real challenge. Mm -hmm. And it still is a challenge. What's the Christian landscape like there now? Um, just with regard to some of the different denominations, you know, we think of uh, Latin America as being predominantly uh, Roman Catholic, but I remember about the time that I, before I went down, uh, kind of, there was a, an infamous dictator named Rios Montt, uh, who was a, an evangelical Protestant who really persecuted uh, Roman Catholic Church. And I don't know if there have been any long lasting effects from that or. Not as far as I know, the Roman Catholic faith is still extremely prevalent and um, at my language school I had a Franciscan friar to and met several um, Roman Catholic seminarians coming to study at our language school one guy was not real impressed that I was going to be a priest no doubt. <laughs> yeah imagine that but um that's okay Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Bill, Bill says, simmer down, honey, simmer down. <laughs> Lots of um, pro, um, evangelicals. There are especially a lot of Pentecostals. And so um, not a lot of Episcopal. And sometimes they don't know exactly how to experience us because we, a lot of people think we're Catholic light which there's part of that that's true. I'm taking the Episcopal Church History class and Anglican Studies at school this semester. So there's part of that that's a little true. We're, we're just a strange cat, as Father David likes to say. Um, does that answer your question? It does, yeah. And yeah, I, I think you also answered my other question, which was just the, the degree of general awareness of what the Anglican Church even is down there. Yeah. And that's something that we struggle with in a lot of parts of the world. It's yes. But God is good, and we still get to serve in some incredible countries. And maybe sometime I'll, I'll tell you the hi history of the Episcopal Church later in the semester. <laughs> <laughs> we almost died out during the, um, after the uh, Revolutionary War. So that was kind of crazy. I just... I just got past the Civil War this week. So, um, yeah, we we have had a bumpy ride, but God said, nope, I want my Episcopal church here. And so look at us today. We still get to serve under the Anglican communion, which is an incredible blessing and experience liturgy. Uh, 
Um, well, because I had done ministry there before and God's just put a love in my heart for these people. I, I want, I want to hug them all and bring them all home, but then nobody be left. So they're just loving, gracious, kind people. I, I can't, I can't say enough about the people of Guatemala. I, it makes me sad when I think they're, um, so many are wanting to migrate here for the American dollar. I'm going, now let's find something else to do. I want to, I want to, I want their country to help with the young people. They work in the field all day and they see what little money they get. Of course, the cost of living is so much less there, but it's like, you don't know how good you got it. That's what I want to say to everybody at the border. But, you know, there is crime and there is violence and they want a better life and they think they can have that here. <clears throat> and sometimes we just want to switch places. It reminded me of, that's all I do, I say all the kids at work. Oh. It reminded me of the children in one class and they came to the point mm. And they went on the playground. One kid started running, all of them chased. But that one touched the one that was running over it. And they were going, I mean, it didn't matter what language you spoke. That's what they did. <laughs> Love that. that. It's intuitive. It is. Uh -huh. You have to teach children to be and it's so bad that it happens. And I think that's the theme of my education at seminary. I'm, I'm busy learning and unlearning. And I think that goes for all of us every day. We learn stuff and we need to be willing and open to unlearn things too. Anybody else? Also a, a lot of political oppression when I was there. Is that still the case? Do you know? Do you get the sense that things are a little bit better in that regard? Well, my main information about politics comes from Elizabeth Bell, and um, and she seems to like the president. President, I think he's called a president, and he is a a medical doctor, and so he snapped down when it came to the pandemic. I mean, they got fined if they left their house at certain hours. <clears throat> and so they did not have a lot of problems like so many people did around the world. And it's because of that ability to manage. Some might say control. Some might say fine manage. Yeah, it is a fine line. It's a lovely people after and um, we left after my, we left July 31st to take some personal time and Bill likes to surf down at the coast. And so we go down there to a little surf hostel and <clears throat> there's, they have these palapas thatched roofs that like the oceans across the street. In Guatemala, there's black sand. So be sure and take your sandals. And one time we went there in November, we met our daughter who was traveling and we were staying in one of the palapas and it was at two in the morning. I don't sleep well. And I sit up and the um, bioluminescence was in the water. Have you heard about that around? I've only read about it around Puerto Rico, but it's like God takes a highlighter, whoosh, one of those bright yellow highlighters. And with every wave, it was like sparkling this highlight yellow. It was amazing. I've seen it in LaPorte. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it was over there. I've I've never known it to be yeah. close to us. Yeah. Yeah. And then my I I was telling that to my my daughters <laughs> to travel and and as you know my middle daughter's in the Coast Guard and she said, Oh yeah, I saw that when I was um I forgot where my other daughter said, well, I saw it too, but it was blue. And she was off the coast of Vietnam, Laos, maybe. So, wow. Our God is amazing. That's what I come away with. And that's what I want everybody to feel. 
that can you, I mean, it brings me to tears just knowing how loved we are by this amazing God who gifts us with blue tailed lizards just to look at. <laughs> so when you're ready, I'll be ready too. Let's take a trip. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Great. Took us away for a while. Yeah. yeah. What's your next trip? Um, Tyler, <laughs> <laughs> I get to go home. We have um. Normally, we've had reading week where that we don't meet in class, but we have all this reading to do. But this is the first year we'll have a full break, so I will go home October thirteenth.